Known for their hero character complex, it's hard to believe that the INFJ personality type could play the role of the villain in certain scenarios. Despite these scenarios being rather fictional in most cases, how would the INFJ villain be presented? And what would be their motives for seemingly evil plots? Welcome, or welcome back psychos! Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. Alright, let's get right into the video, starting with number 1. Their evil motives would be surrounding their unique ideology. When you think of some of your favorite hero versus villain movies and stories growing up, there's always a clear way up between which character's motives are worth rooting for, and most of the time it's the hero we all naturally gravitate towards. However, due to the rarity of the INFJ turning to the dark side, it's fair to wonder what exactly the INFJ would be fighting for when portraying a villain persona. Well, since this deeply imaginative personality type is so familiar with playing out all the different potentials and directions the world can take, it's not uncommon for them to strive after the impossible. So, when applying this concept to fictional malice, it wouldn't necessarily be the case of spite against humanity, but rather a frustration towards their blindsided habits. Rooted in perfectionism and equality, the INFJ villain would use force to achieve this ideal, despite the contradicting viewpoints of their opponents. Number 2. Strong-willed and focused With reasons and motives deeper than just being evil for the sake of power, the villainous INFJ would come bearing the much-needed oomph to see their unique vision through. Using their purpose as their main drive, this motivated and organized type would make it their life's mission to make their ideals a reality. And this is where their discerning nature may be perceived with an ulterior evil motive. Because they will do anything in their power to fight for their mission, it's likely that they wouldn't turn a blind eye to non-ideal approaches, where they may make rather immoral decisions. In terms of a fictional standpoint, they may make difficult decisions that end up actually harming others in the process in order to benefit a larger group of people later down the line. Or they may use the brains of people who do in fact have ulterior motives for the sake of fulfilling a bigger vision. Number 3. They would come with an extremely articulate approach. Speaking of organization, if you know anything about the INFJ personality type, you'd know that they can't get anywhere in terms of their achievements without relying on their skillful planning habits. And if you think their day-to-day -day is consumed by planning, just imagine if they were setting out to see their perceived villainous plans take form. They would most likely be perceived as the evil genius behind the plot, rather than the villain going out and doing the dirty work themselves. With a way up between their need for change and their conflict-avoidant nature, the INFJ villain would be reluctant to make any sudden moves, and would likely ensure the least abrupt route possible. They wouldn't want anything to get in the way of their visions, yet they also wouldn't be likely to make any irrational decisions, especially if the story involved other people's happiness being at stake. Oh, how evil. Number 4. They would recruit and automate with like-minded people. On the topic of the INFJ's well-thought-out approach, it's unlikely that they would try to fulfill their ideal vision without the help of others. Like we said, they may resort to recruiting actual evil accomplices for the sake of following their vision through, yet that wouldn't be their first choice. In fact, the perceived evil INFJ villain would most likely find the motivation to play out their visions into reality through the agreement of like-minded others. Since the INFJ knows that their expectations of the world and others can be a little far-fetched, and sometimes even fairy tale like it's not only within their supervillain persona that they require a little outside approval to go forward with it. This means that it's likely that they would be the mastermind behind the curtains, pulling the strings and convincing others that their visions are worth the chaos associated. 
or they would be a part of a bigger group or plan that not only resonates with their moral viewpoints, but also adds different angles and opinions to their deeply set point of view. Number 5. They may be tricked into their position of evil. In the case of the INFJ villain not being the main antagonist of the story, it's likely that they were manipulated into a position of evil without realizing who and what they're standing up for. Rooted in the narcissist-targeted phenomenon of the INFJ personality type, it's likely that an INFJ villain would be influenced or controlled into exploiting others in the name of empathetically protecting the actual antagonist behind it all. With a good explanation surrounding the evil actions expected of them, the INFJ villain may just be tricked into doing things that they would later regret. Since it's so out of character for the INFJ to simply be evil, it's not unlikely that there would be a higher force targeting them and using them as their puppet. And while a true INFJ character would have a knack for seeing through these hidden evil characters, their empathy towards people's pasts and the habit of believing in the good of others may cause them to turn a blind eye to how twisted the hidden villain's expectations of the INFJ are. Number 6. Their motives would likely be deeply personal. When thinking of characters such as Ebenezer Scrooge, who is actually considered an ISTJ personality type rather than an INFJ, you can see that we're quick to judge someone's character and decisions in life without knowing the lessons they had to encounter. This is most likely where the INFJ would find their motivation behind such discerningly evil actions. Although their imaginative ideals may be a driving force, the real question would be what led the INFJ to these ideals in the first place. Maybe they set out to demolish bullying because of their victimized experiences as a child. Or maybe their plan is to punish malpractice doctors who have ulterior motives behind their chosen profession due to a personal experience in their past. Whatever their reasoning, you can bet that the INFJ villain holds their reasoning close to their hearts, even if they don't communicate their reasoning. Number 7. They would see right through the characters perceived to be fighting for good when they actually aren't. Speaking of evil intended contenders, the most ironic aspect of the INFJ villain would be that they see something that the audience doesn't see. On the topic of evil doctors, it's not that this personality type would use their held grudge against every doctor they see. Instead, they would do their intricate research and target only those doctors whom they have factual proof that vengeful thinking is appropriate. However, for the sake of an entertaining storyline, these intricate details would most likely be left out of the audience's viewpoint. In this case, the hidden villains would be the ones perceived as doing good, and the INFJ's actions would be seen as unexplainable and unaccounted for. When in reality, they see right through the perceived hero persona of their opponents and are taking the necessary actions against them. Which brings us to our last point, number 8. In the end, the audience would be rooting for the so-called INFJ villain. If an INFJ was ever to be portrayed as the villain in a story, you can bet the story would come with numerous twists and turns. You know, those movies and books that you just can't put down because as you find out more and more about the characters and motives, you don't know whose side you're actually on. In the case of the INFJ villain, there's no doubt that the character would leave the audience with an awestruck realization that they were only fighting for good the entire time. Known as a redeemed villain, a true INFJ antagonist wouldn't remain the antagonist for the entire story. In fact, it's likely that the villainous INFJ doesn't even project an INFJ-like guise until the end, when their true intentions and reasoning is revealed. Let's just say, if the INFJ were to be the villain within a story plot, not only would the author have to get extremely creative, but the audience would certainly need to watch or reread the plot more than once to get the full picture of who this mastermind antagonist turned protagonist truly is. Well, psychos, that's it for today. So, let us know in the comments below if you think an INFJ could actually be perceived as the villain in a story.
Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.